Since I've had a lot of interest in this project, I figured I'd better create video 1.1 and get that released. Uh, basically, and I cover some of the technical aspects of doing this conversion and show you the modifications that have to be done to the stock board, as well as how I modified the Y carriage to accept a heated bed. Okay, so I have the two wires soldered to the board. I'm going to go ahead and zip tie these wires uh, to the side of the case just so they can't accidentally get yanked on. Run them out through the back. And then um, the AnyCubic Ultra Base heated bed kit that I have came with a, uh, for the thermistor, came with a DuPont connector. And it'll actually fit the socket for the. Um, heated bed thermistor uh, but it doesn't have any way to secure it permanently so what I'm going to do is just stick it in there and then put a dab of hot glue and that should hold it in just fine but that's pretty much it just waiting on the Tri-Gorilla uh, MOSFET to show up in the next couple days and we'll get this thing up and running Okay, this is the underside of the stock build plate, and you notice that the studs are spaced pretty far inward as compared to a standard I3 style bed. Uh, here are some adapter plates that I designed and a laser cut out of ABS plastic that allow you to fit a standard I3 MK3 configuration heated bed, which is a 220 by 220 millimeter size. So the AnyCubic Ultra Base kit fits perfectly in this configuration and that's what I'm going with but you should be able to use any bed that has stud spacing of 190 by 190 millimeters. You'll just have to ditch the factory uh, bed adjustment nuts. Uh, they're too big. You need something that's going to be about one inch outer diameter or smaller. Uh, here I'm using just some generic brass thumb screws. The next thing I did is because the voltage coming out of the board is actually f about 4.8 volts and the Tri-Gorilla MOSFET specifies 5 to 24 volt input. So I was worried that the voltage might not be enough to kick the MOSFET on. So what I did was solder in a just a cheap generic uh, voltage booster. So I am getting about 6.5 volts out of the wires now and that should be plenty to turn on the MOSFET. Okay, so here's my power box setup. I'm using an IEC320 male connector with a switch, and I also have an IEC320 female socket with no switch. And I've got the neutral load and ground wires paired up and put into the power supply. So one cable feeds the male connector with the switch. When that's powered on, it powers on both the 24-volt power supply, and it sends 110 to the female socket that's on the back side of the box. And that female socket on the back side of the box will power the factory power brick that's going to send the 12 volts to the Mega Zero's control board. Also, when you're running 24 volts to your bed, make sure your bed is set up to take 24 volts. Usually it's just a different configuration of how the connectors are attached or soldered. On the AnyCubic Ultra Base, it's really simple. There's a jumper that you just simply snip the wire and then you're set up for 24 volts. Okay, so again, just as of right now, I'm waiting for this guy to show up, and I should be able to have everything running. I don't see a reason why it's not going to work, but uh, my suggestion is to uh, wait until I finish and release video 2 before you start ordering materials. I'm going to have a pretty comprehensive list of all hardware that you're going to need, uh, and I've got the software figured out already. So just uh, make sure you subscribe, like the video, and video 2, when that launches, hopefully later in the week, we should have our answer. Can we power it with the stock control board? And even if this doesn't work out, you can look for video number 3, which is going to cover upgrading to a different control board. And uh, regardless, this option will work. Uh, it's going to be a fair bit more work, but I think in the end it'll pay off because it'll be able to support a lot of additional features like auto bed leveling. So yes, I am working on doing a 32-bit port upgrade that would use the factory enclosure, could even utilize the factory display. So I will have uh, that project in the next few weeks uh, completed as well. But for now, let's get it running on the stock board. Make sure you subscribe and follow for video 2, which will be getting us running on the stock board. 
in video three we'll cover upgrading to the 32-bit board so thanks again for watching we'll see you soon